Hi everyone, this video will demonstrate how to mix and pour up your plaster models using the impressions that we took earlier. So we're using our alginate impressions and we will be using what's called the inverted pour technique. So I'll need my plaster spatula, plaster vibrator, I have my water measured out back here in two mixing bowls, one for each model. I'm using ortho plaster, so that requires 35 milliliters for every 100 grams of powder. So I used a graduated cylinder. I will be using 200 grams of powder. So I double my water measurements. If your graduated cylinder doesn't go up to, in this case, 70, I would have to measure out 50 milliliters and then 20 milliliters to get my total of 70. So I've already pre-measured out my water. Let's go to the scale and measure out our powder. When you're ready to measure your powder, turn your scale on if you're using a digital scale. Place your bowl on to the scale and zero it out. We want 200 grams of powder and we don't want to include the weight of the bowl. Add enough powder into your bowl to get 200 grams. We'll call that close enough. If you're within one or two grams, you're good. Take the other measuring bowl. I'm going to measure out both sets. Since this is a larger bowl, it weighs more. Zero it out again. Now add your 200 grams to measure out your powder. When you're a new assistant starting out, use the manufacturer recommended measurements. I know plenty of offices eyeball their measurements. So they'll just add a couple scoops of powder and then enough water to get the proper consistency. But if this is a new skill for you and you don't know what the consistency should be, use the manufacturer recommendations until you get used to that consistency. So let's take our powder back to our laboratory and do our mix. Before I start my mix, I want to look at my impression. So it's been over here, it's been disinfected and wrapped in a moist paper towel. I don't want to see standing water droplets in my impression. It should appear shiny, but no standing water in it. If there is water, blow it out with your air water syringe, or if you have an air spigot in your lab, use that to blow out excess moisture. So this looks good. I don't see any standing water in the impression, so I'm ready to mix. When you mix, remember, always add powder to water. Add it all at once. Take your plaster spatula, your stone spatula, and incorporate the powder into the liquid to get a nice, smooth mixture. don't do this any longer than 30 seconds because we have to get it onto the plaster vibrator to vibrate out all of the bubbles. Turn on your plaster vibrator and I like to tap the bowl up and down on the plaster vibrator. Using pressure on the bowl, so I'm physically pushing the bowl against the vibrator the bubbles rise to the surface. Once you start the vibrating, don't re-stir your mix because you'll just stir air back into it. So just tap it on your vibrator here. Once you get the majority of the bubbles up to the surface, we can then start loading our impression. handle of the impression to your vibrator. That will cause the entire impression to vibrate and it will help the stone flow. Start 
start with small increments in one corner of the impression and just keep adding in that same corner. Watch as the stone flows through the deepest parts of the impression. Turn your impression to assist it flowing in these different teeth, flowing from one tooth to the next. Always adding stone to the same location. If I were to add stone over on this side, the two sides would meet and create a bubble, an air pocket, where the two sides meet. Continue adding stone in the same location. Using the vibrations to let that stone flow around your impression. Always put a barrier over your stone vibrator to help contain any mess. Since we're not using a box and pour method, you will get stone dripping out. Keep adding small amounts to one side and just rotate it. to the periphery, the top border of your impression material. Don't let it drip down the sides. You want to keep it as neat as possible. That'll help you out when it comes time to separate. This is the inverted pour method, so I've poured up the anatomic portion, the teeth and tissues. Now I have to pour up the base, the art portion. To do that, I have plenty of leftover plaster. Check the consistency, this is pretty soft. I need a thicker consistency for my base. So I have a little extra plaster powder. I'm gonna add that to thicken up my base. This is the only time I tell my students it's okay to add powder to a mix. When you add powder or water, you go back and forth between the two, it gives you a weaker plaster mix or a weaker stone mix. But with the base, we're not too concerned with that. We need, we need a nice sturdy base for this to work. So I'm going to take this, I'm gonna scoop it out, put it onto this tray here. You can use a, a tile, something smooth to help you shape up your base. Create a trapezoid shape. A trick to do this is to push and lift. If you push and pull, you're just going to flatten out your mix. So push and lift. Trapezoid looks like a unfinished pyramid. The posterior side of the model is wider than the anterior and you want your base to be at least a half an inch thick. This looks to be about three quarters of an inch. The inversion of this, inverting it means to turn upside down. So I take my stone anatomic portion, turn it upside down onto my base, my art portion. Give it a little bit of a wiggle and then use your spatula to push the stone up on the posterior side just to connect that material. I don't want to have any gaps. Don't slide it up on the sides. You'll end up burying 
your tray. It'll be encased in stone. And I see that happen with some new assistants. They just put stone all over the tray. Then they have to chisel it out when it sets. So this is all the further you want to go. Just slide it up the posterior region and set it in a safe location to dry. Once it's set, we'll come back and separate it. In the meantime, I can start my second mix for the maxillary model. All right, let's take a look at our maxillary model. Again, it should appear shiny, but I don't want to see any standing water in the impression itself. So this one looks good. Again, if you have water, just blow it out with your air water syringe or your air spigot. Add your powder to the water. Incorporate that powder with your spatula. Give it a vigorous stir to make a nice, smooth mixture. Always remember to wear your PPE. Even if you're working with disinfected models, you may not have that concern over infection control, but we're still working with hazardous materials. You don't want to breathe in that powder and it can really dry out your hands, so I like to wear gloves with this. You've got your nice, smooth mixture. Let's vibrate out the air bubbles. With the impression filled up to the border with stone, we can then make our base. Take your remaining stone. Because it's a very loose consistency, we need to add more powder. Stir it up. Again, we, not, we want a stiff mixture. We want something sturdy, so when I set the impression on top of it, it won't just flatten out and run all over. Yes, by restirring this, it does get bubbles back in to the base, but because this is the base, that's not as big of a concern. Once we trim the base, we can then fill in any bubbles that appear. So once you get a thicker consistency, that's pretty good for a base consistency. Take your tile, set it on the countertop, take your plaster, shape it up into a trapezoid. Again, push and lift. That's the trick for these bases. Don't just push and pull because it's going to stick. Push and lift. So your base is wider in the posterior region, more narrow in the anterior, because that's the shape your impressions have. The, net, the dentition, more narrow in the anterior, wider in the posterior. Inverted technique, turn your impression upside down, invert it, set it onto your base, wiggle it slightly into position, and slide the posterior side up to connect and meet with the stone that's in your impression. Only slide up the back. Do not slide up this side. We want the tray visible. 
if that tray disappears, if it gets covered in stone, it's going to be a lot of hard work to get it unstuck. We will let this set up. It'll take about 30 to 40 minutes for the stone to set, and then I'll show you how to separate them. In the meantime, I can clean up my excess stone. If you have a lot of leftover stone, take it and put it in the trash. Don't let it go down the drain. The stone will set up in water or underwater. So any excess, put in the regular trash and then rinse out what little is remaining in a sink that has a plaster trap to capture the sediment so it doesn't enter your plumbing pipes. We're back and we've given our models enough time to harden. They've gone through their setting process. Gypsum products go through an exothermic reaction, so don't be surprised if your model gets warm and starts to sweat. You'll feel moisture come out of your stone. If you set it on a smooth surface like the countertop here, you'll get little condensation, little water droplets. What I find as the safest way to remove these is to lift as straight up as possible. Now you'll have to separate, you'll have to start the separation process. And I like to do that with a laboratory knife. And I put the point of the laboratory knife under the tray and give it a twist up. So safest to put it on the countertop. But I kind of go under the tray and give it a, a push up do both sides equally. So under the tray and give it a push up. You can see that it's starting to loosen already. Once you've loosened it, then you can try to lift up to separate it. Now don't just try to crank the handle back. I see a lot of new assistants just tilt it up and that's how we break the anterior teeth off. So try to lift it straight up and it takes a little effort, a little wiggling, but try to lift as straight as possible. With the impression removed, we can take a look at our results. Looking for any bubbles on the teeth any voids so far it looks pretty good check out the occlusal surfaces lingual surfaces now there's still impression material stuck that's an easy cleanup you can see there's some impression material stuck between the teeth I'll just take an explorer or another uh, thin instrument to scrape that out so this is a pretty good result I don't see any bubbles any issues with this this is a nice study model now it still needs to be trimmed that's a whole nother skill in and of itself so get your knife under the tray and start to see it wiggle get to the other side loosen the opposite side up if you try to separate these too soon and they haven't gone through their setting you're more likely to break the teeth. If a plaster hasn't reached its full strength yet, you could break the teeth off. Taking a look at this impression, again, there's just some alginate stuck between the teeth. That's an easy fix. Got some stone blebs here. I can use, I won't use my knife to do that because I could easily scratch, slip and scratch the teeth, but you could use a scaler to pick those off. That's part of readying the impression or readying the model for presentation to the patient. I have a defect here, but that's on the actual model itself. There was a poorly done composite restoration on that tooth. So this looks like a good 
diagnostic model. They just need to be trimmed. To take care of your alginate, just tear it out. You might have to cut it out with your knife. Again, be safe with that. Put it on a solid surface and then you can cut the impression out and then throw it away. Now, if your model broke, if you broke a tooth off, you'd have to call your patient back up and get them back into your office. Alginate material can only be poured one time because during this setting process, the stone is soaking up the moisture from your impression. And it happens, you know, we get a, a broken model or a big void and it would affect what we need to make for the patient. So just be very careful as you're pouring up your models. Once you get your trays cleaned up, you can soak them in a special tray cleaner to loosen up the remaining debris, but get the bulk of the debris off your tray. If you are using plastic trays, you could just throw them out, um, disposable plastic trays. But metal trays are reusable and we have to get them ready to be used on the next patient. So clean them out as best you can and then soak them in a tray cleaner to get the remaining debris out. If you notice when we started the skill, these were nearly spotless. So we want to get them back to that state to be used on the next patient. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful.